Aston Villa fans, good morning. All of you, congratulations. Because last night, you qualified for the Champions League for the first time and you last played in the European Cup 41 years ago in the 82-83 season having won the competition the season before so you're back in it and are you back in it for good are you back in it to win it the man who seems seemingly can do no wrong with uh, Aston Villa fans Unai Emery was speaking coincidentally at the club's end of season awards dinner and he was utterly thrilled well, it's a very special day today, very special day. It's our dream. It's our dream. When we started the season to be here, to be here getting the, the first objective we, we were thinking, and the most difficult, because in Premier League, they started 17 contending more than us, completely to be there. We focused the, the Premier League strongly. The, the team, really, uh, always, they were focusing and, and trying to to commit it, uh, strongly to, to get uh, the OGD we had, and we, 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 we used today, we got it. It was a dream, but they've done it. They've got there. Um, John McGinn, hugely popular player uh, at the football club, once had his heart set and going to Celtic, went south, went to Aston Villa. He, of course, was uh, at the awards uh, dinner last night, and he spoke about the journey that the club has been on. It's been a, an amazing season, uh, a mental season, Obviously, bring Tyrone up here as to have. Uh, <laughs> obviously, we were in the, at the club in the championship. Uh, us two and baby Jacob were the, the only three remaining, and Courtney, obviously. So, there's four of us here tonight who were on uh, part of that championship journey. We got promoted. We obviously get into the Premier League. We were seven points behind with four games to play. We managed to stay in the league. We kept building and thankfully we've uh, achieved something which we haven't done for 40 years. So uh, on behalf of all the players and staff, we're, we're over the moon and delighted. Simon, so, mean, this is an incredible story in a matter of, matter of just a few years, gone from championship to Champions League. Oh, absolutely. From the remarkable decline of Aston Villa to being an English, a force in English football, mm. which you have to factor into this conversation, that they had they climbed to such a level that they dropped out of serious contention of ever winning the league um, and got themselves relegated to the championship when we talk about context on football clubs and what football clubs and what success looks like. Unai Emery is now on the, on the, on the, on the, on the riding a wave created ultimately by him of a team that's done remarkably well in this division this season to qualify for the Champions League. They haven't won anything. They've qualified for the Champions League. Something that Arsenal fans criticised Arsenal Wenger for years. But that's the reality of where Aston Villa are now because they're building. Their building block is. Newcastle's building block last year was to get fourth in the Premier League. They didn't finish fourth this year. They finished you know, much further down the table. I think it's a great achievement for Unai Emery. I think it's a validation of his capability as a manager. Mm. I think his capability as a manager was seriously derided by the British media. Um, and he went away and managed somewhere else, won European competitions, and has come back to a slightly lesser club in terms of achievement in recent times than Aston Villa and punched above his weight. And next season, he'll be the victim of his success because unless he emulates or increases, we'll be having a conversation about Unai Emery and what Aston Villa do next. Well, you said something about Arsenal a while ago, and I was like, mm, you know, they've got to spend, two, I think you said 200 million plus to stand still. Villa are going to have to spend big to stand still because the big difference they've got next season is... They're playing in the Champions League. Yeah, and the, the the intensity of those games and the pressure physically and mentally compared to playing in a Conference League of the chalk and cheese. Yeah. So, and they've had, to be fair to them, more recently when they've not got some results because the injuries they've had, it's understandable because the amount of games they've played. So, they're going to have to back him. But if they back him, they have got such a capable man. I mean, I was there Monday night with Talksport for the game against Liverpool. And I've been at Villa Park quite a lot over the last few years. The place was bouncing when that third goal went. It's, they're remarkable fans. But also Aston Villa are responsible for dashing North London's hopes. Mm. They've taken the Premier League away from Arsenal. Yeah. If Arsenal had beaten Aston Villa, they'd be winning the league now. And they've pipped Tottenham for a fourth spot. So you have to look at Aston Villa in a certain way. I think he's done a really good job. I think it was disappointing. You can put nuance on it. And so it's disappointing to go out of the European Conference League against Olympiacos. And people say Olympiacos have played more European football. That's fine. They have probably played more European football. The home football. game was a disappointment. But, they, but they've been poor. 
Villa in those two games in that semi-final. Olympiacos are sitting fourth in their league, in a league that you'd expect British teams to be far better than fourth in, if they were playing in those leagues. To so be I think, fair, they've been leggy for a while. Villa. And, that, and, that, and that will be depth of squad yeah, and, and quality of, of replacement. And that's the next question. But right now, with the narrative being Villa having re-emerged from a side that got relegated. I mean, that is preposterous that a club of Villa size got themselves in the championship and, yeah. and in the state that so they're in. So how long have they been up? Four years, is it? It's fourth, I think this is their fourth, fifth, isn't it? Fourth, fifth, fourth yeah. or fifth. But Did when they went up, Simon, and we've spoken about this before, I was lucky enough to speak to Wes Edens at Wembley when they went up. And he said, our plans are huge for the club. And of course we will back them. So Weiris is an incredibly and wealthy fine, individual. Jim. And in their first season, by the hair, oh, yeah. last the day. skin of their teeth. Last yeah. day, last they day, haven't. Last day ever. But so with the right man at the helm, and Emery seems to be that man, then the sky could be the limit. Or is this a moment in time? I think it's. A, I think it could be a moment in time because unless you're going to go pound for pound and match what other people are doing, which is going to be difficult to do with the governance and the regulations that are beginning to tighten and sophisticate and bend and twist to make it look fairer, but really it isn't, you're going to find yourself in a difficult position. Danny makes the point. I mean, you're never going to see, I don't think, a Leicester City winning the Premier League again, but they did once. And they were an outlier. And, you know, and, not, and Newcastle last year were an outlier in the top four. I would expect normal service to resume pretty soon. I would expect Chelsea to regain their poise. And all those snigger behind their hands about my observations about what Chelsea may or may not do might see themselves mm. looking differently if, if, if Chelsea continue their progress. I expect Man United to eventually get better in short order. So all of a sudden, two sides that aren't doing anything, sabre-rattling at all, We'll be back in the mix. I think in the here and now, which we like to do when we're criticising, so we should do when we're praising, Unai Emery has done a really good job. I think the, the, the problem for the poor bugger is next year he's going to be judged by these standards. And I actually, going back to Ange Postacoglu, the more you listen to Postacoglu, irrespective of the clumsiness of his expression, the more you'd have that as an owner going, I'm not happy with this, I want to win things. He is actually saying things that other managers cower away from saying. He's actually saying, I'm only here to win things. Normally what they do is they caveat it and give themselves an out, or we couldn't do this because of someone else. He lays the blame predominantly at his own door and predominantly sets his standards higher than other people would expect him to and may well be a victim of his own rhetoric at times. But Unai Emery, great job, fantastic job. Great for the Villa fans. They're a, they're a big club. I'm but a moment them. in time. I think it's a moment in time. I think there's an argument for him to be manager of the year, to be honest. I think when we were talking at the beginning of the season, none of us gave Villa a pair of top four. Very few. No, probably not. You're right. You know, You're Man right. U, Chelsea, yeah. Newcastle, yeah. all those clubs. I took Newcastle to finish above them. Yeah. Um, he did, he's probably up there now. Arteta's not going to win the league. I, I'd say Emery's manager of the year. And I think he will be back. But Simon makes a great point. I mean, the reality is, how can you be competitive? We talk about Tottenham. You can throw Villa in the same. With the financial restrictions, even if the owners are prepared to plough more in, there's only so much you can do now because of the restrictions to try and jump into that pool of the big boys. It's, mm. it's, it seems bizarre that we're, there's not a way in which they're fixing that to give... I think you talked about it a lot a few weeks ago, Simon, where you know new owners, if, if when they come in and that, that little dispensation in the first couple of seasons to try and invest more would have been an idea. Mm. But they've not, they've not done that, have they? No, and they're not likely to. But no. I think Villa have also, of course, got the added benefit of perhaps another 50, 60 million quid. Yeah. Because they've got the Champions League. They're going to get 30 million for the group stages plus the yeah. gate receipts. Yeah. So they've got themselves another 30, 40, 50 million quid. They might have triggered some extra revenue from their commercial sponsors because they're in the Champions League That's and all true. that goes with it. So they've got themselves 60 million quid with extra revenue. And they're no slouches about spending money. I don't know how close they are selling to the win with their financial fair play governance over the last three years no, 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 or no. the profit and sustainability or whatever cobblers you want to call it. Mm. The point is, is that Villa right now are a success story. But the success ideals move real quick because they've yeah. now set their water yeah. their watermark. Yeah. And their watermark is fourth. And they've got a World Cup winner and a goalkeeper, which helps a lot. Yeah. It helps a lot. Yeah. He's um, been outstanding. Yeah. Yeah, he's a yeah. great goalkeeper. So Villa are there. Champions League football for Aston Villa next season. I mean, I wonder what Villa fans think. Um is this is this the start of something big that could be big for years? Or is it just a moment in time that you've got to embrace that moment in time and get on with it? You might want to let us know. Uh, you can give us a call 03717 Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.